Okay, welcome back. I appreciate uh, the help and support you guys are providing us. Um, before I go and give you a few examples, I would like to uh, go back and talk about the unity function and the way we are going to see that in terms of circuit schematic. And then I'm going to go and talk about algorithm and inside the algorithm I'm going to show you the steps and then I'm going to go and try to cover as many examples as I can today so that RC is maturely covered. Now, if you remember, for example, when I had uh, the voltage source in my discussion and when I had the unity of function, let's say I want to have five of U of T shown graphically and drawn using the schematic. When I say five of U of T, this is T, that's the function. Suppose this is voltage. If this is voltage, this axis would be in volt. And I'm going to look inside the bracket. Inside the bracket is only T. For T less than zero, the entire U of T is going to be zero. Times five is going to give me zero. So I know how it's going to be. For inside bracket more than zero, T greater than zero, I'm going to have U of T settled to one. One times five, I'm going to have five volts. So this function can be shown graphically using a unity function with the height of five volts, the drastic change I want to see. Now, the question is, how can I build this inside a, a circuit? You want, you are looking at a given structure, the structure we are going to talk about in a moment. You are looking at that given structure, unknown structure. You are supposed to get zero until you get for a moment in time, a critical moment. And uh, basically, there is a drastic change, and then you are supposed to get five volts constant. This is a unity function. Now, I know I can create a five volts for eternity, for example, from engineering point of view, of course. So I have a power supply. It was five volts yesterday. It is going to be five volts tomorrow. But how can I make this zero and then five volts at a time I want? I'm going to go in and introduce a switch. This is where I'm looking at my design. This is where I'm looking at it. That's my eyes, okay? And I want from A and B, I want to see zero. Then I want to see a switching moment. The switching moment is this one. And then I want to see five volts. But zero means short line. So I would like to see a short line happening now. If you take a look at this, if I had this node connected to this node, you can see AB is going to sh see only a short line in front of itself. So that's going to be zero. But then at the switching moment, I'm supposed to see five. So I still, my A goes in, still I get to this point, and still I need to go here. So in order for this to happen, I need to actually change this switching element and put it in this moment, uh, position. So you can see in this position, A goes in, fi sees five, and come back. But I'm supposed to see zero for T less than zero, and five for T greater than zero. So I'm going to introduce what we call a switch. A switch, like a regular door, has a hinge. So if you take a look at this door, for example, Let's take a look at this door. This one, it has a hinge. And obviously, when I open the door, the door is actually going to open and close on the hinge. Now, here is position A. The door is in position A. Take, take a look at my red pen. The door is in position A. And then as I push my hand and close the door, the door goes into position B. The way this switch is working, the hinge is there, it doesn't move. The hinge is always there. But I'm going to have this end of the door changing for, from position A to position B. 
The way this change is going to happen is by my hand. So as I see, I'm going to push my hand and I'm going to close the door. That's the way this switch is going to work. Let's go back to my scenario and I want to explain what I mean by switch schematically. Okay. This is a switch. I'm going to have the arrow of this. By this arrow, I mean the hinge of the door is here. This is the hinge. And then I'm going to push this door and change its position. Here is my finger and I'm going to change this, push this door and I push this door and the door goes in and latches on this side. In order to manifest this movement, I'm going to have a second arrow, curvy type arrow saying T is equal to zero. I see many questions just in regard to this shape and I want to explain this as clearly as I can. By this arrow, I mean the door is initially in position X, position Y, and position Z. So, door is initially latched onto point X. This black arrow, this arrow tells me how the switch is moving, and this tells me when the switch is moving. As I push this switch, this blue line like a regular door is going to look like this, is going to look like this, and eventually is going to latch onto this. T0 X at T0 plus is going to move into Y and latch itself into Y. So let's go back again. If I wanted to create a voltage source, that is, I'm sorry, let's make it black. That is, uh, that, that is going to be a unity function. What do I see from A and B? From A and B, I'm seeing 5 of U of T. For T less than 0, I see a short circuit. For T greater than 0, I see 5 times 1. This, this, this door is going to move and going to go into position Y, and I'm going to get my 5 volts. That's for a voltage source. How can I manifest a unity function for a current source. So let's take a look at the current source. The current source, say, is going to be, uh, uh, say, I want to have a four uh, U of T minus one. This is amp, okay? This is going to come in. I have three positions. Which one is the hinge? Which one is going to be uh, moving and latching? This is point A, this is point B. Where is my critical point? My critical point T minus one is equal to zero, T is equal to one, that's the time of change. The time of change, so whatever the switch is, the time of change, either it goes this way or this way, is going to be T is equal to one. For one second, I need to do a change. That's what inside the bracket is telling me. For t less than 1, I'm supposed to get 0 times 4. It's going to be 0 amp. And we know 0 amp is actually an open line. So I want to see an open line for t less than 1. For t less than 1, I need to see an open line. So if I have a hinge on this side, and if I have my door latching into position x, initially, this is going to go and work around this, right? Now I can actually see how to put my uh, movement. So this is my door. Hinge is here. The latch is there. And how is my mo door is going to move? The door is going to move like this at t is equal to 1. What happens? At t is equal to 1, I'm going to push my hand on the door and I'm going to push it. Since the hinge is there, this arrow is going to go move, 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 move and latch itself into Z. And therefore, 4 amp is going to be available to the point of A and B. This switch actually exists physically. It's called transistor. We have MOS transistor and we have bipolar transistors, topics we would usually cover in electrical engineering discipline. But here we have an ideal picture of those transistors. So these are, ex they do exist, and we are going to utilize this accordingly. So that's what the switch is, the switch, 
and switching event, I need you to identify before the switching event and after the switching event. Where was the switch before? Where was the switch after? And as you can see, by a switching event, I'm going to have different topologies. The switch comes in and actually gives me a different topologies. Let's go and see what the algorithm is, generally speaking. And then I'm going to apply a number of examples and uh, basically cover that as much as I can. Uh, step number one, draw the topologies. You are going to have two, three different topologies. Draw the circuit topologies before and after Switching events. As I said, a switching happens. And before and after, you are going to have topologies. And as you uh, event or events, and as you draw these topologies, the switches don't need to exist anymore because you have a short line there. Since this one doesn't work, I go to the blue line. In the circuit before switching event. Find the voltage of capacitor. Well, if you remember the discussion we had, only the voltage of a capacitor doesn't change. I'm going to call this V of zero minus, or you can call it V of T zero minus. So this is VC of zero minus. Only the voltage of a capacitor doesn't change. The current of the capacitor, voltage current of a resistor, anything else can change drastically but the voltage of a capacitor doesn't. Now, if your point of interest, if your variable of interest is the current of a resistor, you don't have to care initially. Although you want the current of another resistor, you will still find this because that's a very stable variable. You can count on for before and after switching event. You can count on it. Okay, because of this nature, we are going to see Vc is the same as Vc of zero minus. That's, what, that's why step two was needed to do. We need to find this and do this. Now you can tell me if it is Vc of zero plus you wanted, you found it in step three. If it is I of R of zero plus you want to find, then you have to find it. Then find the variable of interest. at zero plus. I'm going to tell you what I mean. So, I'm going to say I'm, I'm holding on the voltage of a capacitor. This voltage is going to momentarily remain the same. If it was two volts just at zero plus, zero minus, it's going to be two volts at zero plus. It's going to remain the same. It's not changing drastically. For that moment in time, the capacitor is going to act like a voltage source. Very briefly, very small amount of time. So I'm going to utilize that, and I'm going to say an aim for the variable of interest, and I'm going to find that. In order to find y of infinity, <coughs> excuse me, open capacitor, because capacitor at t is equal to infinity, as infinity, if the incoming signal is dc, once again, in chapter 9, we talk about sine cosine functions. And sine cosine functions are not a, a DC. They are AC. We are talking about chapter 7. And chapter 7, you're talking about a step function, a DC excitation. Uh, for that DC excitation, if you remember we discussed, a capacitor is going to take as much charge as it can and then stop taking. And as such, the capacitor is going to act like an open line, open capacitor, or replace it. Replace it with an open line. Mm. 
break the line and see what is your variable of interest at infinity. Tell me what is y of infinity. The entire purpose of this algorithm is this. Tell me y of zero plus, tell me y of infinity, and tell me tau. If you've got it, then you're done. So I've got y of zero plus, I've got y of infinity, and then I need to find tau. You found y of infinity. A stand across the capacitor. Capacitor is now behind you. It's not short. Capacitor is behind you. You took it off. You stand, you put your two feet across the two sides of the capacitor, and you look at the design. You shut down independent sources. So a voltage source, a set voltage sources, set independent. I insist independent voltage source to zero, which means short. Set independent, independent, independent current source to zero. You shut down all the independent sources. If it is a voltage source, it's going to be short. If it is a current source, it's going to be open. And this, this, this topic we covered in chapter one and two. And then tell me how much R equivalent is seen from the two end from, from the capacitor. Well, you have your C. This process is going to tell you how much is your R equivalent. And obviously tau is going to be R equivalent times C. What is left? Nothing which is a step seven, y of t, variable of interest, is y of infinity plus y of zero plus minus y of infinity e to the power of minus t over tau. Identify where the switch is. Whether the switch physically exists in the design, you can see it by your eyes, or it's not, rather it is represented by the unity function for voltages and current. But you can see where the switching event is. When the switching event happens, tell me the two topologies before and after the switching events. Focus on the before e switching event and tell me Vc of zero minus, only Vc. Nothing else you can trust. Anything else can jump. Only Vc of zero minus. That's the only value that can actually go after the switching event. It's going to hold itself. That's going to remain the same. For that moment in time, you go and find y of zero plus. How do you do that? You have Vc zero plus. That's a voltage source. Very momentarily, you tell me y of zero plus. For t as infinity, you open the capacitor. As you open the capacitor, the entire design becomes pure resistive. No more capacitor exists in this design. Pure resistive, and you find me via infinity, much the same way you did it in chapter three and four, whatever technique you like. Then you need to find me our equivalent. Stand across the capacitor, put the capacitor behind you. Don't, don't short it, don't open it. It really doesn't matter. Just disconnect it and stand across the two sides of the capacitor and look at the design. What is our equivalent? If you remember, we define how to go, uh, go about our equivalent. You shut down all the independent sources. If you have dependent source, that's a different topic. We cover it later you know, at, the, at the end of the class. But independent sources, voltage source becomes short, zero. Current source becomes zero, open. Then you have a pure resistive. Parallel pops up, series pop up. You need to find me our equivalent. As you do it, our equivalent times C, that's your tau, and then you benefit from this equation. I would like to go in and I would like to solve a number of problems and uh, illustrate what I mean by these steps. And I also want to uh, explain some of the challenges we face.
Okay. An example is on page 259, example uh, 7.2 perhaps. So let's see. It's a practice example, so the value, the uh, process has not been explained in details. This was also a, uh, an exam question, so uh, similar exam questions can easily pop up in the final exam. And uh, just uh, to let you know, uh, the final exam schedule has been released just recently on Friday, um, March the 2nd. And apparently many of you have exam before and after. So I would really strongly su suggest you practice and get to know the material before the exam begins so that you actually have a comfortable uh, understanding when you come to the class. Okay. These are all on, so I don't want to write this down. And the voltage of interest, thanks, thankfully, is thankfully is going to be VC of this capacitor. How many capacitors do you have? One. Oh, by the way, the switching event is already shown is this way, so that's going to be T as equal to zero. Okay. How many capacitors do I have? I have only one capacitor. Therefore, this is a first degree system. You have only one storage element, that's one capacitor. You do have a DC, that's another thing that you need to investigate. Do you have a DC excitation or do you have a sine cosine excitation? You have a DC that is exciting the design. So you are in chapter seven. These are the things that should come to your mind in a fraction of a second. Now, resistor, 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 this, and one capacitor and one switch. There is an arrow that is applied on the switch. This is your hand. This is the hinge. This is the door. This is the way your hand works. At T is equal to zero, you actually push the door open. That's the way you need to see this. So what is the switch in the first place? The switch in the first place has been closed for a long time. And then it opens at T is equal to zero. So let's go and see what happens. You have two different topologies. Topology number one, I'm going to make it uh, one here and then the other one. To topology number one, you have the switch closed. You have this one closed, and then you have 12 and four, which are in parallel, which is not bad, 12 and four, and one six of F, this is where the switch is. You can see that this switch is now closed, and we are talking about t less than zero. At t less than zero, the switch is closed, and this is 24 volts. Topology number one. Topology number two, the switch opens. As the switch opens, you push your hand in, you open the door, this part of the design does not communicate with this part of the design anymore. There is a breakout between the two sides of the design. Therefore, although I'm going to have this, Let's just write it down, but it's actually dangling uh, and it's not, it doesn't have any impact on the entire design. You see this one? Capacitor, resistor, resistor. 4, 12, 1, 6. And still the voltage of a capacitor is the voltage of interest. Now, in the past, strange enough, some people said, what happens to this line? But remember, we discussed this so many times. If there is a current goes in and it doesn't come back, then this side is going to be blown up. Put in, put in, put in. How much does this one is going to take from you? In order for, to, to find a solution for this dilemma is this. There is no current that goes in. Any current that goes in, it has to come back. If you put in any line, this line, the current that goes this and the current that goes this have to be the same. Cut this line, this one, this one has to be the same. Cut this line, there is no current, this is zero. Therefore, when we get to this end, this really re doesn't matter. Its existence has nothing to do with the entire process. This is topology number two. Topology number one, topology number two. This is T less than zero 
and this is t greater than zero. Okay. Now, I know that the voltage of a capacitor does not change drastically. If I know what the voltage of this capacitor as zero minus is, I can claim the voltage of zero plus is going to be the same. So I need you to tell me how much this voltage is. But remember, the switch has been closed for a long time. Long time to engineer is infinity. This system has been there for a long time, which means this system for yesterday is infinity. The question is, if this has been there for a long time, all the movements and all the fights between the electrons and positrons have taken place. And this capacitor has charged up as much as it could. And there is nothing else that this capacitor would do. This capacitor is going to stop taking charge. It's going to act like an open line. So this is infinity to minus 10 days ago. So that 10 days ago. So basically, this is going to act like an open line. So in t less than 0, I have 6. I have this that is open. I have 12. And I have 4. And then I have this. So this is the way it is. I said long time. So that's very important for us. I need to know how much this is. If I find this, it's only Vc of 0 minus. This is 12. This is 4. This is 6. How much is this? This is a pure resistive network. You can do a simple uh, collapsing, compression and decompression, circuit reduction if you may, and then find me this voltage. Now 12 and 4 are in parallel, and since I have no interest of the variables inside, 12 and 4 would be uh, 3. If I actually simplify this, yep, that's 3 volts, 3 ohm. So I can actually simplify this. I'm using a circuit reduction technique. I'm going to have this 3 ohm as the conclusion of 12 ohm in parallel to 4 ohm. And if I want Vc of 0 minus, Vc of 0 minus would be 3 ohm voltage divider, 3 plus 6 times 24. And therefore, this is 3 divided by 9, 24. It's 1 over 3, 24. And this is going to be 6 volts. Uh, sorry, 8 volts. OK. This circuit has been there for a long time. The capacitor has charged up and doesn't take charge anymore. The voltage of this capacitor, according to that simple resistive network, is going to be 8 volt. What is this? This is Vc of 0 minus. The good thing is that you can transfer this from 0 minus to 0 plus after the switching event. So I'm going to claim that Vc of 0 plus Vc of 0 plus is equal to Vc of 0 minus as equal to 8 volt. The task assigned to the pre-switching event is already done. I needed to find the voltage of a capacitor right after the switching event, and I took advantage of this structure. So this part is done. What else is missing now? Remember, everything else is up applied on this one. Tell me how much. <coughs> tell me how much Vc of infinity is. Where is this one? This one. The topology after the switching event. That's my point of uh, attention, point of focus. Now tell me, if I let this go for a long time, this capacitor is going to act like an open line. Okay, that's 12, that's 4, and this is Vc of infinity. Okay, well, if this is open, if this is 12 and 4, how much is this voltage? It has to be zero. Why? Because there is no source of energy. You don't have a voltage source, you don't have a current source. This voltage, this charge is going to go through this and eventually is going to discharge itself. Everything is going to discharge. 
Because there is no source of energy, Vc of infinity is going to be zero volt. The last thing you need to find is, tell me our equivalent. I need to find our equivalent because I need this for the tau. I need you to stand across the capacitor. This is behind you. Stand across the capacitor and look at the design. You see 12 ohm in front of you. You see 4 ohm in front of you. And they are in parallel. So our equivalent is going to be 12 ohm in parallel with 4 ohm. And the result is 3 ohm. Why, why do I need that? Because tau is our equivalent times uh, C. And in this case, our equivalent is 3 ohm. And C is 1, 6 farad. Again, 1, 6 farad really is huge. It's just for the sake of a uh, problem we are trying to go. 3 divided by 6 is going to be 0 0.5 second. The unit of tau is second. What is my y of t? y of t is equal to y of infinity plus y of 0 plus y of infinity e to the power of minus t divided by tau. That is going to be Vc of t. So far so good? Now I want to twist the same problem a bit and I want this time to ask you to look into the current of the 12 ohm. There is a 12 ohm and this time my variable of interest is this current. I'm going to call this I of X. I need you to tell me how much I of X is. You have two options in this design. Sometime you go to the shortcut and sometime you go to the actual algorithm. The shortcut is easy. If I know how much Vc of T is for after switching event, this Vc is actually right on 12 ohm and therefore it's going to be divided by 12. So I can easily say Ix is equal to Vc of t divided by 12. And that's going to be 8 divided by 12. 8 divided by 12. I want to do that. 8 divided by 12. e to the power of minus, this is 2 actually, 2t. That's one way of doing this. Can I find this response using my technique? my approach. I want to tell you what could be wrong, so I need you to be conscious, aware of what I'm trying to achieve, and I want you to be able to identify the correct technique from the wrong technique. Uh, remember, this solution is for t greater than zero. If you want to have the complete solution, then you need to multiply this by u of t, which we don't want to do at this time. Okay. Okay, I want to uh, keep this Ix as equal to 8 divided by 12 e to the power of minus 2t. That was very easy. This voltage dumps itself in parallel across 12 divided by 12. That's what it would be. Okay. How much is Ix at zero, zero plus? Ix at zero plus, using this equation, you put zero in, it becomes eight divided by 12. Let's go back to my technique. I wrote extensive to basically solve this design. It says, draw me the topology before the switching event, draw me the topology after the switching event, and find me the variable. So before the switching event, the switch has been closed for a long time. This is 6 ohm. This is the capacitor. That's the 12 ohm. That's the 4 ohm. Twenty-four volts. And this is 1 over 6. 
and the current of interest is ix. Here is what the mistake is. The mistake might be is this. Why don't I find ix at 0 minus and uh, basically um, apply ix of 0 minus to ix of 0 plus? The reason this ix might be okay to do that, but remember, if there was any other elements inside, this ix can jump. It is allowed to jump. So ix of 0 minus could very well be minus 5 amp. And then ix of 0 plus could very well be plus 8 amp. ix cannot be trusted. So although my point of view is focused on ix, for pre-switching event, I assume that this one really doesn't exist. I'm not interested in ix. What am I interested in? I'm only interested in VA, VC. Although I need IX, I need you to find me VC for pre-switching event. Before the switching event, find me VC. You go in, you find the VC of 0 minus, that would be 8 volt. VC of 0 plus, that becomes 8 volt. This is what you can safely say. So everything is going to be the same for the two topologies, the VC of 0 minus, the VC of 0 plus. Then the question is, how much is Ix? You now move to the next stage where the switching event has taken place, and the question is, how much is Ix? In order to do that, you are going to say, I'm going to replace the, voltage, the capacitor with the voltage source momentarily for zero plus. Remember, I'm focused on zero plus now. On zero plus, on zero minus, I got my VC of zero minus. I did my job at zero plus, I'm going to replace the capacitor momentarily with a voltage source of 8 volt. I'm going to have the design in front of me, 4 and 12. What are you interested in? Ix. How much is Ix of 0 plus 10? Remember, this is momentarily replaced by 8 volt for just one moment in time. This is going to be 8 volt divided by 12. That's going to be... Uh, I, uh, 8 divided by 12, that's going to be my Ix of 0 plus. This one you can trust because you were able to hold on with the trust, trusted value Vc0 minus, Vc0 plus, then you found me Ix of 0 plus. That's the way to find Ix of 0 plus. You can find Ix of 0 minus and claim that that's the same. It's not. It may happen for this circuit, but generally speaking, it's not. So you found it. The next question is, how much Ix of infinity? Well, Ix of infinity, this is your design. Remember, this circuit was only momentarily for 0 plus. Ix, Ix of zero infinity is this one. Capacitor acts like an open line for infinity. You have one resistor, one resistor, and nobody else in, the, in this universe to help them for any Ix. Ix of infinity is 0 amp. How much is tau? Tau is exactly the same way you found it for Vc. So you see there are so much common with when you do Vc analysis. So I'm going to ask you to stand across the capacitor, take a look at this. Well, you might ask, I'm looking for Ix. Yes, you do. But the tau of the design is the same for all the voltages and currents inside the design. So you will find the tau the normal way. You go across the capacitor, you take a look at this, 12 and 4, they are in parallel, and you get your tau, and tau would be 3 times 1, 6, tau becomes 0 0.5 second. The very same way you do. So tau is the same regardless of what the variable of interest is. Then you are now ready to say how much I have Ix of t is. Ix of t is equal to 0. Ix of infinity plus Ix of 0 plus Ix of infinity e to the power of minus t divided by 0 0.5. This is the same as this. So if you are doing any variable other than the voltage, you have to be careful. You can attack that variable before the switching event because you can't trust it. 
All you can trust is the voltage of the capacitor. Now, I don't want to emphasize that anymore. I want to go in and I want to solve two or three uh, questions and then hopefully we are done with the RC scenario. <coughs> Okay, let's grab a different design. Uh, this is page 277. Three kilo ohm, five kilo ohm. The capacitor thirty volts four K zero point five millifarad. That makes sense. At least it's a lot better than farad because farad really is big from size point of view. So that's twenty four volts, and there is a switch. And this is my switch, and it says, you can see it from this arrow, how the switch is going to work. T is equal to zero, this is A, this is B, and this is C. Well, I'm just going to call this D so that it's not mixed with the capacitor. And the voltage of interest is thankfully V of capacitor. In front of you, you need to see the circuit in a proper light, proper order, sequence. First, where is my switch? Do I have a DC element? Yes, I do. 24 volts, 30 volts, so everything is DC. I have a capacitor, so it's this capacitor is charging, this charging exponentially. That's what comes to my mind. Now, the way the switch is working is that if you push the switch, the switch has the hinge on D, and therefore, when you push the switch, the switch moves like this. This is the door, this is the hinge, and it moves like this. So if the switching event takes place, the switch goes into position B. The switch has been in position A for a long time. The long time is the keyword, which means in position A, it is infinity for me. And then from position A, it moves to position B. So what is my topology before and after the switching event? Topology, the switch is on position A. I have three, I have five. These are all K. And then I have the switch closed and my capacitor. Okay. And whether I'm looking for this current, this voltage, this current, this voltage, I don't care. I want you to find VC. And what I mean by this VC is going to be a reflective of VC of zero minus. Again, these are kilo ohm, that's fine, kilo ohm. Okay, that's topology before the switching event. Let's go and have topology after the switching event. As soon as I understood the switch properly, the switch goes into position B, and you can see I didn't draw 4K and 30 volts, because really, for the voltage of interest, they really do not interact with this voltage. So I didn't draw them. This, they exist, but they don't have any benefit to my voltage. Now I go and I put the switch in position B. Again, this side of the design is all uh, taken off the screen, and you have this one. You have four, and then you have plus minus 30, and then you have the capacitor, 0.5 milliamp, millifarad, millifarad, and then this is the voltage that you want to find. First, draw the two topologies. Second, look into VC, regardless of what the variable interest is, look at the VC. And for that we see, tell me how much this voltage is before the switching event. This topology has been there for a long time. 
Therefore, this capacitor has reached the stable state response anyway. Because it has reached a steady state response, it's going to act like an open line. So what do you see? You see 3, you see 3K, you see 5K, and then you see open line. This open line is the two side of the capacitor, and that's the voltage I want to find. Okay, this is open line, there is no current. This voltage is in parallel, you can see this part, this open uh, line is in parallel with 5K, this voltage is the same as this. So technically, I'm actually finding this voltage. How much is this voltage? Zero minus. Did I say zero plus next last time? Change that to zero minus. This is zero minus and I need to find it. Now, it's simple. You have a voltage divider in front of you. So Vc of zero minus is equal to five divided by five plus three times 24. 24, eight, three, three times five, 15 volts. If you let it go for a long time, capacitor charges up to 15 volts. All the charges come in, the voltage becomes 15, and it doesn't take any more charge. And that's the way I see it for before the switching event. I'm happy because I can take this voltage to the after switching event. Vc of zero plus is the same as Vc of zero minus. Okay, now, I found one of my variable of interest, that was Vc of zero plus. Now the next question is, how much of Vc of infinity is? This time my point of attention is on this one. When I want to have infinity, once again, I say a long time. Leave this post-switching event circuit topology for a long time. If you do that, this resistor, this voltage, and this capacitor, this is going to act like an open line. Okay, this is 30 volt, this is 4K. The capacitor acts like an open line. When it's open, the current that goes through this is zero. When the current is zero, the voltage drop across the 4K is zero, and therefore 30 volt dumps itself across the capacitor. Therefore, Vc of infinity is 30 volts. What is left? The last thing you want to do is to find me tau. Tau, I need R equivalent, and I need C equivalent. C equivalent is 0 point, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 millifarad, and R equivalent, what do you see? I want you to put your two feet across the capacitor and look at the design. Shut down the 30 volts to zero. This is a voltage source. Shut it down to zero, that becomes a short line. Then I stand across and tell me what do you see. If you take a look at it, you can only, only see 4K. So this is going to be 4K, that's all you see. 4,000, K and milli, they are going to cancel each other out. And this is going to be two seconds. What is my function? My function is simple. Vc of t is equal to Vc of infinity. Vc of zero plus, oh, 15. Vc of infinity, e to the power of minus t over tau. Let me try one more example. And I'm, all I'm trying to do is to give you a better feeling. This is hopefully, um, I'm actually going to solve uh, yeah, this is a nice one. So I'm going to solve practice problem 711. That's page 277 and see what happens. So let's take a look. OK. 
Okay. That's a very interesting uh, design. Plus minus 20 U of minus T, 5 ohm, and then you have a capacitor, value is 0 0.2 farad, then you have a switch, the switch closes at t is equal to zero. Again, put yourself uh, uh, in front of a door and see what I mean and how the switch is going to close. That's going to be 10 ohm. And this one is going to be a current source, T amp. I intentionally picked this up because you have two different types of switching events. One switching event is actually right in front of you. The switch has been open for a long time, and then it goes and closes itself at t is equal to zero. This is a physical switch, you can see it. But there is also another switching event, this one. U of my t shows a drastic change. That drastic change happens at a critical moment. That is the time when a switching happens. What is 20 U of minus T? As soon as ask me that this is too difficult for us to understand. But 20 U of minus T is not part of electrical engineering. It's all about math that you might have had last year, last term, or even in high school. 20 U of minus T. Well, you promised me to look into the inside bracket. Inside bracket less than zero gives you zero. Inside bracket more than zero gives you one. That's U of minus T is. Now, if you just uh, handle this minus sign carefully, multiply both sides, or take this to the other end. Take minus T to the other end. It's going to give you a zero less than T. This one is going to give you zero greater than or equal to T. So what is this function? This function is simple. This is time. For t greater than 0, I'm supposed to have 0. So far, so good. Was it difficult, really? For t less than 0, it is supposed to be 1. Then you have a 20 behind it. So what do you have? You have a 20 volts. You have a 20 volts. Then at 0, the volt shuts down to 0. This is the switching event, this one. This drastic change in the input tells you a very important information. So tell me the number of switching events. How many critical points do you have? Thankfully, you have only two critical points. I'm sorry, only one critical point. T is equal to 0, T is equal to 0. Sometime, including one of the heavy assignments I have given you, from the same chapter, you might have actually two different critical points. Let's go learn this stuff before you attack two different critical points, because critical points are uh, heavy in terms of calculation. So you have t as equal to zero, and at the same time, this change happens, this change happens. Tell me, what is your topology? Topology number one, for t less than zero, how is it? For t less than zero, 20 u of minus t, 20 u of minus t is 20. That's the way you have to handle this. 20 volt, fixed, done. Then it's going to be 5. Then it's going to be the capacitor, which is 0 0.2 farad. And then it goes in. But the switch was open for t less than 0. The switch was open. Because it's open, this segment does not interact with this segment. You can actually ignore this. Even though you have a loose hand here, but this current has to be zero. Because if this is open, the current is zero, this current has to be zero. Therefore, this segment does not work with this segment when the switch is open. This is your t less than zero. For t greater than zero, 
What do you have? Don't rush, please, my friends. Don't rush in solving it. Try to make sure you have the topologies drawn first. It's really important to have the correct topology first. The switch closes itself, fine. But this one, what happens to this? 20 u of t, this is 20 u of minus t, sorry about that. 20 u of minus t drops down to zero. Because this is a voltage source and it drops down to zero, it's a zero volt and a zero volt is a short line. So this is going to be a short line. That's going to be five. That's going to be the capacitor, which is 0 0.2 farad, no change. And the switch is closed. You see, this direction, the curviness of this arrow tells me how the switch is working. The hinge is there. You push, you put your finger in and you close it. And this line is going to be closed. If you get this topology right, you are really not far from an answer because as you remember in discussions we had, you are actually solving a still problem from chapter four, not chapter seven now. We just need to have it properly done. And we are going to discuss how this turns out to be chapter four or three in a moment. You've got yourself the two topologies, t less than zero, t greater than zero. The book might be asking about I of this resistor, voltage of this resistor, voltage of this current source. I don't care. I need you to find this voltage for this one because only you can transfer this voltage for zero minus into this for zero plus. That's why regardless of the variable of interest, I'm still going to focus on the voltage of a capacitor. How much is this? You leave this system for a long time. The key word is a long time. When you leave this for a long time, capacitor eventually takes it as much as it can. It's going to stop taking in any more charge. As it stops taking in the charge, this is going to act like an open line. The current is zero. The current is zero, the voltage drop is zero, 20 volts dump itself onto the capacitor. So Vc of zero minus is equal to 20 volt. I take this, trans transfer it to this topology. I'm going to say Vc of zero plus as equal to Vc of zero minus as equal to 20 volt. And only for the voltage of a capacitor. The current of the resistor doesn't hold this rule. The voltage of a current source doesn't hold this rule. Only the voltage of the capacitor. I'm sure I have given you a headache by now about this issue. But I hope that after so many repeats, you would be coming to uh, harmony with this topic. Only the voltage of the capacitor. Okay. If the variable of interest is the voltage, you already have given me the Vc of zero plus. How much is Vc of infinity? How much is it? Well. You have a current source, 10 ohm, 5 ohm, a capacitor, and you leave this design for a long time. That's what this infinity means. You leave this design for a long time. This capacitor is going to act like an open line. If that happens, you're going to see, let's, let me actually grab this 5 ohm and actually sh sh shift it to the uh, vertical position. So I'm going to have 5. Then I'm going to have the capacitor open. Then I'm going to have 10. And then I'm going to have 3 amp. Okay, that's 10. I want you to tell me how much this is. This is Vc of infinity. Now, 10, 5, they are in parallel. And 3 amp, they are all in parallel. If I want this voltage, this voltage, this voltage, everything is the same. So I'm going to say 10 and 5 in parallel, how much is this? If I compress it, the voltage of the compressed value or the reduced circuit is still the same as we see in Fahrenheit. So 10 and 5, that's going to be uh, 50 divided by uh, 15. So uh, 50 divided by 15. So 10 divided by 3 is almost 3.3 ohm. Okay. 
or I can actually keep that t 10 divided by 3 anyway. So that 10 and 5 would be 10 divided by 3 ohm. I can see the system reduced into 10 divided by 3 ohm and the current, that's 3 amp. And I'm interested in this voltage because this voltage, this voltage, this one, this one, this one, everything is in parallel. They are the same. So I, Vc of infinity would be 10 comes in, 3 comes in, hits the head, 10 divided by 3, plus minus the same polarity as I want. So I'm happy with that. Harmony in terms of polarity. And that's going to give me 10 volts. What am I looking for? Vc of 0 plus. We see of infinity. The last thing I want is tau. So in order to find tau, we are focused on the after switching event. I want you to put your feet across this capacitor. Shut down any independent source you have. In this case, you have one current source that is independent. You shut it down to zero, that becomes an open line. You have five ohm on this end, and you have 10 ohm on this end. How much is our equivalent? R equivalent, so R equivalent is 10 in parallel with 5, which is already 10 third I found, and then C equivalent, which is 0 0.2 farad. So that's going to be um, uh, 2 divided by 3 seconds. All the elements are found. You might say that this is really heavy to do, but I challenge you to go through the actual proof and find this equation. You can't. It's really, not that you cannot, it's really tedious. Y of t is equal to Y of infinity, 10. Y of zero plus, oops, 20. Y of infinity, 10. E to the power of minus t divided by two thirds seconds. You're done. I can actually give you a piece of an advice. If, for example, someone says, tell me about the current of this 10 ohm, tell me about the voltage of this. And this is actually a very simple one. You can always find the voltage right from the beginning to the end, and then replace the capacitor with the voltage source of this value. This is a time varying function, this one. So I can always re remove this. I can always remove this in my mind. This is a shortcut for those of you who have an interest. You can always remove this and say this is 10 plus 20 minus 10 is 10 e to the power of minus t divided by 2 thirds. You can always replace it and then tell me how much this current is, how much this voltage is, how much this voltage is, how much this, whatever it is then it's pure resistive. So that's a very sh sweet shortcut. Find me the VC, replace the capacitor with the voltage source, go ahead and do a pure resistive network. The only challenge, the voltage of a capacitor is now exponential. So you need to be careful on that. There are so many good uh, questions at the end of this chapter, and please go and solve them. Unless you solve them, you would not be able to grasp the material. One warning I gave uh, inside the class, and I'm giving it now, the materials we are going to cover after the midterm, by nature, are difficult. By nature, we are talking about different functionality, different equations. When we get into frequency domain, we are going to deal with the complex numbers. So please stay with us. This is a course where you could see a linear relationship between how much work you do and how much success you see in this class. So please stay with us and practice and look into the YouTube and ask us any questions you have. And then uh, hopefully we see you shine again at the final exam. Thank you very much.